It's drive time with Ros here on Gateway 97.8. Now, motorists and police have been seen dragging Insulate Britain protesters off a busy part of the M25. The group's blocked roads for the 13th time with disruption around part of our section of the motorway, Junction 31 in Thurrock. Some demonstrators glued themselves to a carriageway this morning, causing long queues of cars. 35 people have been arrested and joining me now to talk about it is somebody who's uh, becoming quite vocal on the topic, um, a local Conservative councillor from Basildon, Andrew Schrader, who represents Billericay East. Welcome to Drive Time today. Um, have, Good afternoon, Rods. Have today's events come as a bit of a surprise? No, not remotely. <laughs> Getting used <laughs> to it now. But um, no, it's still deeply, deeply irritating, and and just, it just seems so completely counterproductive to me. I, I can't understand. I still haven't been able to get my head around um, what it is they're really hoping to achieve at the end of all this. Well, I interviewed a, an Essex County councillor um, just a few weeks ago on my show, um, and they're rolling out a scheme at the moment in Benfleet. A Benfleet couple have benefited from uh, an insulation grant scheme. So things are happening. Councils are trying to do things to encourage uh, people to insulate their homes whilst uh, giving some money for the purpose of it. Um, we're seeing cars going electric. We're doing our bit in uh, Britain to re reduce the carbon footprint, but it doesn't seem to be enough for these people. Is it that things aren't happening quickly enough, do you think? No, oh, well, I think you're completely right. And of course, we're doing exactly the same thing here, Roz. Um, in addition to obviously the county schemes that you mentioned that uh, run through Essex County Council, um, as you know, I'm chairman of housing at Basildon and we're, we're spending two million pounds um insulating all of the existing council stock to make sure it's all brought up to code it all meets the new regs um and we're meeting our our net zero carbon um objectives and as you say you know uh, almost everyone i speak to now is you know they're looking forward to their next you know if they've got to get trade the car in and get a new car they're thinking shall i get shall, is this the time shall i go electric now um and we're seeing more of the infrastructure rolled out to support that because obviously at the moment it is kind of a bit difficult if you don't have a driveway. But increasingly, um, uh, you're getting, uh, you know, uh, EV charging points in new new build schemes and stuff. So, you know, it, progress is being made. Um, I mean, I obviously from my point of view, I, I think we've got the greenest government we've ever had. The, their commitment to, and, and and really the that's where my frustration is because if you think about, I mean, you know. Plenty of people have got plenty of reasons to not like David Cameron, but David Cameron did bring the green agenda into the mainstream. He he made it socially acceptable uh, for Tories to be tree huggers and uh, and made it cool. <laughs> but and then along come these, and it was just sort of getting to the point where people were actually not talking about it like it was all some sort of uh, you know slightly lefty uh, uh, fringe opinion. It was becoming a mainstream thing. People are genuinely concerned about recycling. They're concerned about reducing their their uh, carbon footprint um, and looking after the environment, improving green spaces. And then come a, a come along a load of people like this who basically say, everything you're doing, any sacrifices you're making, um, are all worthless. Um, because they seem to be under the impression that the whole world's going to burst into flames in the next three or four years. And if you actually look at what um, Insulate Britain and Extinction Rebellion and all these guys are actually uh, demanding, what they want, it's almost the complete wholesale stopping of Western civilization, an end to all ancillary industry, the end to air travel, the end to car travel, mm. and just life as we know it. And and ain't going to happen, folks. And the crazy thing to me is that the only people that they're affecting with all these these stunts and these protests, not just the Insulate Britain guys uh, gluing themselves to the M25, which apart from anything else is just criminally dangerous and stupid. Mm. Um, but, you know, you think about all the XR 
uh, protest in London, trying to bring the whole of the capital city of the nation to a standstill. It's absurd. And you think to yourself, what could possibly make someone feel entitled to do? And there was a, one of these guys was interviewed the other day um, and said quite fr- uh, bluntly that uh, he would block an ambulance. And he would feel justified in doing that because, you know, the cause justifies it. And you think, what on earth would make people feel justified in, in doing something like that? Mm-hmm. And, you know, they've got some poor woman begging them to let her through because her mother's being rushed to hospital and she's trying to get there. You had the woman who was in an ambulance having suffered a stroke who they, they obstructed getting to hospital with catastrophic consequences. What would make people feel entitled to do that? And it's fanaticism. It's because they are complete fanatics. And once you've convinced yourself that your cause is justified, you can rationalise doing anything. There's no sacrifice too great. Um, You know, they genuinely don't care if people die in the back of ambulances trying to get to hospital, because what's that compared to the future of, you know, our children, their children, their great grandchildren? It's all rationalised as justifiable. and It just isn't. It's completely hysterical. And it's outrageous Mm. Um, and I do think the police have to be far more robust in dealing with it and you know we're seeing vigilante justice now with drivers increasingly you know their frustrations are boiling over to the point where they're getting into physical altercations with these people they're dragging them off the road and we can't have that Roz it's we're becoming uh, it's it's like frontier justice so something has to give Um, there can't be any you know, we can't tolerate this kind of behaviour. It's completely well, well outside the realms of what would, would what we would call acceptable under, uh, you know, the legitimate right to protest. It's gone way beyond that. This is outrageous behaviour. Well, we've got, um, I've just found the information that I've got that uh, we were promoting here on Gateway just the other week, uh, Essex County Council's Green Homes Grant, it was called. Um, perhaps some of them need to sign up for that. Now, before six months ago... Well, their leader does. His house <laughs> isn't insulated. But before six months ago, um, I, I'd never heard of uh, Insulate Britain. We had Extinction Rebellion, and now right. we seem to have this offshoot, Insulate Britain. And uh, who are these people? You know, do they have day jobs? Because, uh, you know, I wouldn't have time on my hands no. to go out like they do. They're, they're virtually causing a standstill somewhere every week and of course uh, yeah. all the standing traffic is causing the kind of pollution that surely they want to be rid of no well I, you know i don't want to generalize about these people but when it is telling that any time um you know the newspapers or the press do a bit of a kind of uh, expose on one or two of them they are always invariably middle class quite well off mm. um people who have gone all kind of woke and have got the time on their hands where they think they'll just swan off for the day and glue themselves to the M25. What infuriates me about it is the people whose lives they're disrupting. They're not bothering Boris Johnson. They're not bothering, you know, any of the big opinion makers. They're not bothering the president of China uh, or, you know, any, or or, or India, any of the people that, that might actually have some impact on these matters. They are disrupting the lives of ordinary decent law-abiding hard-working people who are just trying to get from a to b run errands take kids to school go to work make deliveries and you know ambulance drivers and nurses and such like you know people just trying to get about their daily lives who are already pretty stressed out with you know we're coming out of a pandemic we've got uh, people worrying about, you know, their energy bills. They're worried about the their shortage job. of lorry drivers. You know, exactly. now we've got lorry drivers who can't get from A to B because of these people. Yeah, we we need this stuff like a hole in the head, and it's it's not having the desired effect. I don't think it's really affecting the 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 opinion makers and the decision makers. It's just affecting ordinary people. They may feel that you know any publicity is good publicity, but no one's sitting around, Ros, talking about. Oh, well, you know, they've really opened my, my eyes to the problems of climate change and rising CO2 levels. Let's let's have a constructive conversation about that. No, everyone, what instead, what everyone's sitting around talking about is what changes do we need to make to the law to curb the right to free, de- you know, uh, protest and demonstration in order to curb these activities, which for me as a libertarian is so depressing because I believe in the right to protest. But, you know these kind of behavior is just 
utterly counterproductive and, and not acceptable. So the only thing that people are really sitting around talking about is how can we stop this from happening? Well, what they've already powers? got an, an injunction that exactly. against them, uh, Councillor exactly. Schrada. So, you know, where can it go from here? No, well, I, what you're going to start seeing, I think, is legislation that really cracks down on these kinds of protests. And uh, even me, as someone who really respects the right to protest, I can't disagree with them because you cannot have a situation where the entire capital city of the United Kingdom is, is brought to a standstill by protesters. You cannot have people gluing themselves to motorways, putting themselves at risk, putting other motorists at risk. Uh, I would love to know if there have been any accidents caused by some of this stuff, because as soon as you start getting tailbacks and things and people trying to turn around and go the other way, something terrible is going to happen. Uh, it's only a, ma it's a matter of time. So that's what people are talking about. They're not talking about the climate. They're talking about idiots and how we can stop them from making our lives a misery. So I, I and actually, I thought the person who made the most sense on it was the, the Prince of Wales when he was interviewed the other day. And I mean, no one's. No one's going to out green agenda the Prince of Wales. You know, this is this is a guy who's been talking about this stuff since you know for forty odd years, and even he said this is not the right way to go about it. He has some sympathy with their frustrations, of course, uh, and and to an extent, I do too. We all know that change is needed, some big change, and it's all coming maybe too slowly. Uh, but you can only you know you can get people to move so far but you have to carry people with you and this is just counterproductive it's not going to achieve anything well that's where we have to leave it this afternoon we've got to go to the traffic and travel very shortly we'll find yeah. out how we'll our see, roads see what's are happening. doing yeah exactly yeah. for the benefit of our listeners today uh, councillor andrew schrader conservative for billericay east thank you for joining me today my pleasure Rose.